All right, welcome to Problem Solvers University. Uh, my name is Dr. Carlos Moore, and I am the founder of this university, founded back in 1994. Uh, I was stationed uh, in the United States Air Force at Yokota Air Base, Japan. Uh, I was once a deputy, deputy director of a community center on base uh, basically what we did at the community center was to uh, provide social service programs. So even though I was a military man, a master sergeant, I was uh, in charge to put together and conduct uh, programs. Matter of fact, over 82 programs. So my skill set is uh, troubleshooting. I was uh, an instructor in electronics and I taught people how to uh, troubleshoot uh, electronic equipment, also computers. Uh, so I have a, 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 a very vast background. I used to be a fireman, air traffic controller. Um, but that's, that's just to give you a little backdrop of who I am. Now, um, I've dedicated the rest of my life to Christ. Um, and back then, I really, I knew Christ, but I, I wasn't in love with Christ. Um, so now, um, I'm making these videos just so that uh, people around the world may tune in uh, at your convenience to, you know, just check in and see um, if there's something I'm saying that might help you out. Now, I want to say this, too, because as I start these videos, I get a lot of people commenting about the correctness of some of the things I say. But my intent is not to have an argument about um, some of these topics. It's just to get you to thinking about it, you know. It never fails that when someone puts something out in social media, you know, you have these trolls that's out there that's trying to pick apart everything you're saying. So uh, if you're going through some of these things that I go through, uh, keep the faith because as uh, long as you're trying to do God's work, he'll take care of it. Okay, so let's get started. The subject is bitterness, bitterness. Um, now, I see there's about 30 or 40 of you in this group tonight. Uh, bitterness is a resentful cynicism, um, basically an inclination to believe that people are motivated purely by self-interest and skepticism. So resentful, I think that's a key word we could focus on. Uh, so how does this bitterness take place? Um, basically, it's the result of, of an intense antagonism. Okay, you know, other words, hostility, you know, that somebody can't put to bed. Uh, so they hold, on, they hold on to all this, this anger inside of them. The Bible teaches us that uh, to get rid of all the building this rage and anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. The Bible goes on to tell us uh, how to deal with bitterness and its fruits by being kind, kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as Christ God forgave you. Now, Paul tells us uh, in the book of Ephesians, chapter four, verse 31 and 42, ways to overcome this bitterness. So uh, that's just basically uh, what we're gonna talk about tonight. I got a picture here. Uh, this is grumpy old man. I used to always say, I wanna get to an age where I could be like this guy. I want to sit on my front porch with you know, uh, a rocket chair whittling, you know, get off my grass. You see, when I was in the military, you know, I was so active and fighting in different combat zones. Um, you know, it's a lot of stuff go through your head. So in the military, uh, a lot of my friends, you know, we couldn't wait to the day that we retired. And we always said, but when we retire, we ain't going to do nothing. But the light comes on and reality hits you when you get out and you know you still got bills to pay. So we still out here hustling just like everybody else. Um, so this slide says business is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. And that's true because you get mad at somebody and years later, you don't even remember why you're mad at them. Matter of fact, you may not be the one mad. You just don't communicate with that person anymore. And I'm gonna tell you what happens too. After time goes on, you're sort of embarrassed or shameful to strike up communication again. Uh, and it's kind of like Esau and Jacob, you know. Uh, Jacob was, uh, a lot of years had passed by 
from the time that Jacob tricked his brother Esau out of his uh, birthrights. But when the time came for them to meet, Jacob didn't know, uh, he didn't know how Esau, Esau was going to respond to him. So he did everything he could to try to smooth the path out. So uh, if you're bitter right now, my advice would be try to um, make peace with that person. Uh, stick, uh, you know, go out and reach out to that person. Make the first move. I know I have to do that myself. I got a lot of people that I think I'm upset with, but I don't really know why. I just don't communicate with them anymore. And then, I, like I say, at the time, you know, you kind of lose interest or you don't feel like you need to even strike up those conversations anymore. But anyway, uh, let's move on. Mental and emotional. Yes, I am angry and bitter black woman, but I am going to complain about all you other angry and bitter black women so I can pander to black male, to black male ego and give them confirmation of their hate and excuses. Now that may seem confusing to you, but the reason why I put this picture here is that I'm a black man. I'm a 6'4", 270 pound linebacker. Um, I love people. I'm a gentle giant. My wife calls me bear. Um, there's a lot of people that try me on a daily basis, but there's a lot of black women who, uh, when they look at me, they look at me and discuss. And so the questions always come up with me and my friends is that why is my sisters look at me this way? Why do they try to handle me in such a fashion when they don't know me? Um, that's a question for the ages because this has been going on since I was a little lad. You know, um, I won't tell you my exact age, but I'm getting close to 60 now. And so um, this is nothing new for me. I just want to tell my sisters out there, stop being so angry. Uh, you're looking for a man, you need to straighten up. Don't look so mean. Um, treat everybody as though they're new. Stop comparing or stereotyping men, especially black men, when you see them. All men are not the same. So this is why I picked this picture because it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, my Caucasian friends, they love me to death. You know, they, they snug up to me, invite me to the house, everything. It's my own people sometimes. We have this problem with loving each other. And so I want to wake you up to this fact, okay? Now, uh, bitterness, like I say, acts upon the mind, creating hatred. So, as an adjective, the word bitter means sharp, like an arrow, or pungent to the taste, disagreeable, venomous. The idea is that the poison water gives, given to women who were suspected of committing adultery. You know, you remember that uh, Numbers, uh, book of Numbers, chapter 5, verse 18? It says, the bitter water that brings a curse. So, in its figures, Figurative sense, bitterness refers to mental or emotional state that corrodes or eat, eat away at you, such as one experiences profound grief or anything which acts on the mind in a way that poisons and causes your body to commit acts of violence. Uh, it doesn't have to be physical violence either. Your words are violent. Um, some of you may have seen my other videos where I said... Uh, words i believe hurt harder than physical violence because your body may heal but see your mind may not based on what the brain took in so bitterness is uh that state of mind which willfully holds on to anger angry feelings ready to take offense able to break out in anger at any moment so let's just say i walked to this female here and let's say uh you know i just want to say good morning the expression on this young lady face, you know, I would probably say good morning because I kind of know being a black man, her comeback may be, uh, what do I want? Or don't talk to me. You know, believe it or not, women do talk that way now. I'm not saying that's you. If you're a woman, I'm not saying it's you. But And it's not every woman. It's just that I do account, encounter a lot of women these days. They don't they don't open themselves up to be friendly. So if that's you, cut it out. Angry. Why? They really hate each other? <laughs> Become an independent thinker and start to see through the illusions of partisan politics. 
Now, let me just tell you about right now. See, we got this problem in America that Democrats like Democrats, Republicans like Republicans. That's a lie from the hell itself. Money like money. Economics is economics. Politics is politics. I know for a fact that there's Republicans, Democrats that go party together eat dinner and lunch together. But when you watch them on TV, you would think they're at war with each other. So this is why I post, this is why I chose this picture here. Uh, don't be upset. You got to know how to play the game of chess. Um, for this world is uh, divided by economics, not by color. It's, I'm, I'm black. I'm proud to be a black man. But see, I don't take too much offense when I see uh, a wealthy person treat me wrong, whether it be white, black, yellow, green, or whatever, because I'm not on their level. Now, some of us has fallen uh, into this uh, drinking the Kool-Aid, thinking that uh, because you're a certain color, they're going to bring you along with them. Get over that. That's not going to happen. President Bush will not hang around you unless you got a lot of money, unless you're his family members. Michelle Obama wouldn't give me the time of day unless I could maybe help her with her agenda. You know why? Because she's on a bigger platform than I am. This doesn't mean that people are mean or are vicious or anything like that, but they have reached another level. See, I have a doctor degree, and sometimes I find it hard to communicate with people who hadn't even uh, went to their first year of freshman college. And it's not because I think I'm better than anybody else, but my experience is different. Matter of fact, when I was in the military, we had this place called the Top 3 Lounge in the NCO Club. Why do you think they made a Top 3 Lounge for E7, E8, and E9s? It was because we, we, we needed a place to let our hair down and not let our troops see what we were doing. So basically, based on economics, we was actually isolated so that we can now communicate with people on all the same level. So that's, how, that's why I put this uh, slide there. Uh, here, I want you to see that don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for that stuff you see on CNN or MSNBC. Uh, don't that Rush Limbaugh junk. That is all propaganda. This is the it, see. It's designed to create hate, and a lot of people don't understand where this hate coming from. And see that hate creates itself to become bitterness. So when people now, especially lower income brackets, they walk around with so much hate that they can't focus on what's really going on. I always say, you got to look behind the veil. You got to look behind the curtain because what you see is what they want you to see. Always remember that. Whenever you see something on TV, it's because it was planned for you to see it. Keep that in mind. Stop arguing with each other about politics. Stop arguing with each other about color. Be proud of whatever color you are because if everyone is take the skin off themselves, they're going to all look the same, okay? So this is why I want to put this up here because um, the danger in succumbing to this bitterness and allowing it to rule all hearts is that it's a spirit that refuses reconcilia reconciliation. So uh, as a result, bitterness leads to wrath. Now, does it look like Michelle Obama have wrath to Bush, which is an explosion on the outside, on the feelings on the inside? So, now this wrath anger leads to brawling, which is a brash self-absorption of anger. And, 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 you know, I see a lot of this while I was stationed in England. Uh, they used to have politicians fight each other. You know, same thing in Japan. Uh, I lived in these countries. So I actually lived there three and a half years in London. Well, up in Hayford, it was in Oxford. You ever heard of Oxford University? Well, I used to party there all the time. But um, in Japan, you know, when the when the um, when they were open for session, political office, I mean, they have fights. I mean, throwdowns. Now we don't see that too much. Uh, in the United States, but we do see tempers flare up every once in a while. Now, another evil brought on by bitterness is slander. Now, this is a biggie. Uh, have you ever gotten a new car or uh, got a promotion at your job and, you know, one of your best buddies uh, you used to hang out with, uh, all of a sudden they become angry with you and you don't know why, you see? And then all of a sudden they start talking about you. 
they they slander your name, defame who you are. Um, now, I just want to say you can't do anything about that. You know. Um, now, this word "bitterness" as used in um, the Bible is referring to blasphemy, blasphemy against God, or merely slander against men who believe in God. You know, a lot of people say, well, uh, Dr. Moore, you say you believe in God, but man, you don't act like a preacher, a pastor. I said, well, what should one act like? They said, well, you're too happy. You, you, you're too young looking. Um, you're too cool. You know, you got a lot of jive talk. And that's the shame that I have to look a certain way in order to know what the word of God is. And so what I tell them, a pastor is nothing more than the under shepherd of Christ that's in charge of that church. But maybe, um, maybe you need to rethink what pastor means. Does not mean a dictator. Now, um, I, I warn people about making a pastor their idol. So I tell a lot of people, don't look at me as an idol. I had a girl... Uh, who I was helping on the street the other day because that's what I do help people get in shelters and she was bowing down at my feet I immediately picked her up and um, I ride with a lot of police officers and deputies around uh, the city of St. Pete and and she was just trying to kiss my shoe So they was laughing at me. They say look doc. That's what she, that's the power you have and it remind me of some biblical stories where um, Paul, you know, you know, he Silas was going to town and they wanted to bend down and kiss their feet and they said no get up and so what my point my point is this is that <clears throat> I am just a man your pastor is just a man or a woman and if you uh, find yourself idolizing them remember now especially if you're married women this can create bitterness in your husband he may not want to go to church anymore based on the way you behave it's a form of adultery while you're standing in front of your man. Now, you're not gonna hear this from a lot of clergy because they need your money. But see, I, I'm not begging for your money. I'm just here to tell you the truth. I don't care if you agree with me or not. My point is, we must get to a point in this world where we're not angry. So the best way to overcome angry, anger and bitterness is to love the one you're with. You remember the song, Love the One You're With? So let's stop looking out over the fence, seeing if the grass is greener. Men, stay with that woman that you got. Woman, stay with that man you got. Or, uh, I know we live in a new world now, man on man and woman on woman. Whatever the case may be, let's stop being angry with each other. Let's stop this, um, especially I'm talking to Christians, when we say we are disciples of Jesus Christ, but yet we act as Pharisees and Sadducees. Okay? Bitterness look like narcissism. Bitterness look like narcissism. Now this slide also applies to men and women who act bitter about life. Now maybe that when we don't get our way, we find faults in others. Hmm. Maybe this is what makes people bitter. They have a touch of narcissism. Now, as you know, narcissism, narcissism is a mental disorder. Uh, usually, I'm think, in my research, I discovered that when you are a little baby, actually when you're um, uh, conceived, the, uh, your frontal cortex start taking form in your brain and the circuitries are wired now. Now, if you're... Uh, let's say conceived from an older woman sometime, then the stress level of that woman can cross circuit your frontal cortex and cause you to believe that you not received enough love. Now, at, let's say that uh, after you're born and you don't get touched enough or loved enough in a household, your frontal cortex will rewire itself and it takes it to the uh, reward circuit in your brain. So that's what now in order to feel like you're happy or receiving joy out of life, you have to, you, you was basically wired to love yourself. You see, see like these people here, nothing will ever be your fault. There's always going to be somebody else to blame. And what you're doing is loving yourself. 
your, your, your body has a defense mechanism that automatically kicks up because it's, it's the way your brain is wired. Now, a lot of scientists, uh, doctors, they don't really understand how people can hold on to this narcissism, but it's very difficult to convince somebody that they are a narcissist. Basically, all you have, to, all you can do is try to go along with their behavior. And I know sometimes it gets on your nerve too because the center of the conversation is always about them. And when you see that person coming, you want to run away. Now, the person who's bitter is oft, oft, often resentful, cynical, harsh, cold, relentless, and unpleasant to be around. Uh, that's why I say they have the symptoms of a narcissist. So a bitter person, narcissist, they sort of go hand in hand. You know, you watch the news nowadays, you're looking at the uh, elections and there's a lot of bitterness going on. That's because we have a lot of people in office right now full of themselves. Uh, I won't I won't ever call their names because I'm a nonpartisan. Now I vote Democratic, but I'm I always tell people I'm half Democrat, half Republican. I believe that we shouldn't give a lot of handouts. We should give hand ups. At the same time, I believe in social services. I don't believe that everybody can make it without help from someone else. So that's why I call myself half and half. Um, so. The book of Hebrews in chapter 12, 15 warns us to see to it that no one miss uh, the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. You know what that means? Simply put, we must always be cognizant of allowing bitter roots not to grow in our hearts, which will cause us to fall short of the grace of God. Because God wills his people, that's us, his children, to live in love, joy, peace, and holiness, not in bitterness. Therefore, as a believer, we must always watch diligently, being on guard against the grave peril of bitterness. Okay? All right, class, that's it for the night. I'm getting a little tired. Um, like I say, these are just my opinions. I put these videos out to help uh, to be helpful to you. And if you have found these videos to be help to, helpful to you, please send me a donation at uh, Dr. Carlos N. Moore, P.O. Box 871, Southern Florida, 33583. Uh, I received some donation already, but, uh, you know, I accept all donation. I just ask not to send cash because, you know, it could get pure for, uh, or stolen, I should say. Uh, at different levels in the mailing system. Uh, I love my brothers at the post office, but uh, sometimes people are going to be people, right? So uh, I always teach my class, my students, not to use, uh, not to send cash in the mail, even birthday cards. A lot of people are used to sticking a $20 bill in the card and mailing it, but um, you got a lot of people out there who will steal that money. So uh, once again, I need your donations because I'm trying to build a Family Support Center in the neighborhood to help um, some of the poor folks out here and also struggling students in high school. Uh, we have what we call the dropout type schools. And um, in Florida, a lot of kids are waiting till they turn 16 so they can drop out. And what I'm doing is taking a group of guys into these school systems doing some mentoring. So if you feel like being helpful, please send me a generous donation. Um, till next time, take care and God bless.